G'day. Welcome back to the Nexus Project, where I am aiming to consume all of the resources in the entire world. As you just saw, the desert phase is finally complete, which means that every single resource node in the desert biome is being consumed. So let's just take a quick look at that on the calculator map. This is the satisfactory calculator map with all the nodes loaded up with my map not loaded on it. And you can see here, there's 95 resource nodes in the uh, desert biome, depending on where you draw the line across here. Um, and that's not including the water uh, resource wells and the nitrogen resource wells. Let's just have a look at my save overlaid. Uh, this is it here. And as you can see, all the resource nodes are still highlighted and they're in the other parts of the map. But in the desert, um, once you put a miner on a resource node, it disappears. So this is what it looks like. Okay, so everything is getting picked up and transported out of the biome, either by train or by truck. Um, everything has been uh, pushed into a factory and made into a more complex product other than the sulfur and the nitrogen. So you can see them uh, just here. Here's the sulfur and the nitrogen's coming in here. Um, I just haven't decided exactly where, I know what I'm gonna make out of it. I just don't know um, exactly where I'm gonna do that, but it's gonna go on the train nevertheless. All right, so what I wanna do is just do a quick run through um, of what I've got going on here in the desert. I don't wanna to spend too long on it. Don't wanna make the video too long. Um, and I'll attempt to answer any questions uh, in the comments. All right, but before I do that, um, I just want to address a couple of things. Um, no doubt some of you would have noticed these yellow flashing lights on a lot of the machines, so it's actually building up even more now. Um, that's not because they're starved for um, resource. It's actually because they're overfilled. And the reason that's happening is because some of the areas of the factory are not actually getting resource sunk um, at the moment. Um, and you'll notice that these aren't either. The reason why I don't have the sinks running is because when I was doing Fix-It Cam, by the way, I'm learning how to use Fix-It Cam. Um, it's great so far. It was crashing. Fix-It Cam was crashing a lot. So I've, I've disabled a lot of these machines um, simply by letting it back up by turning the resource sinks off. Um, I could turn that back on now because um, I'm not doing Fix-It Cam anymore. Um, a lot of the places in the factories around the world are getting um, sunk, uh, such as this, um, but certain places aren't. So you can see now, even now, just turning that on, um, a lot of these lights are going to start coming on. That'll start filtering through now. So that explains a lot of the yellow lights on the machines. Um, also, what I could do with that is, um, because these are all going to get trained out of this biome, I could actually turn this temporary resource uh, sync set up on here which is very messily hidden away uh, just inside there um, and you'll notice that these will start flowing now the second thing that I want to address is just a small disclaimer yes in the intro video there I did say that all my machines are running at 250% um, that's not quite true but the vast majority of all the machines in here and there's thousands of them uh, are running at 250% with three shards in them. The only time where they're not running with three shards are situations where I'm at the end of a production line, like such as this area, um, the final um, blueprint here. And it's just the way the numbers work out um, with the amount of resources coming in. Um, that all of these will be triple sharded, every single one here, except for this last batch here. Are not uh, these. I've, I've worked out the numbers slightly differently just to make the belts work. And these ones are not quite triple, but that's the way it is. There are a couple of situations where the machines are double sharded, um, such as here, um, just because the numbers work out so perfectly that way. But for the vast majority of all of the machines in the desert, they are 250%. Um, the reason why I'm doing them at 250% is for a few reasons. One, to save on space. And two, mainly to save on FPS and uh, the object limit in the game. I want to keep the object limit in the game as low as possible. And the reason I want to keep the object limit down is obviously so that I can actually finish this project um, 
without the whole thing turning into a complete slideshow or blowing up my PC. Alrighty, let's do a really fast a zip around tour of what I've done in the desert. Starting with, just here, it is the pressurizer for nitrogen. 1800 nitrogen going over to the train station. Nothing really else happening there. This little factory here is one of the first things I built because this is actually going and providing steel for the nuclear power setup. And that uh, goes onto the train and over to the swamp for nuclear power. Over here, we are making crystal oscillators, 52 per minute. Uh, these are all triple sharded all the way down the end. Um, we're also making in this factory, um, obviously all the sub components that go into it under here, but uh, we are making automated wiring, 75 per minute. And the stators are actually coming from a different factory over there. All right, over here, a whole bunch of um, miners, obviously, picking up supplies. Okay, we'll just go around in a clockwise direction. Uh, the truck pickups here. Now, this factory is doing quick wire. Um, a, huh, let's just, I can't remember all the numbers, but a shitload of quick wire and AI limiters. All right, so all these guys here are doing quick wire and AI limiters over there. Um, I will put all the numbers in the comments as well. All right, these are the Caterium um, refineries. Right, yeah, let's move on from there. Uh, this factory here, including, so underneath here and on top of here, um, you'll notice some real big F FPS drops uh, during this. Um, this is doing steel. So the first thing I did, other than the nuclear setup, which is that that guy over there, uh, the first thing I did was pick up all the coal nodes and um, merge them with uh, iron and make as much steel as possible. I then turned all the steel into uh, pipes and beams, and they go on to make more complex things. Down here is copper. Hell of a lot of refineries, mixing with copper with water uh, to make the pure copper ingots. Um, and it's pretty cool. Uh, hell of a lot of belt work went into this. Um, and it's all neat and lovely. All right, down here, um, I'm turning a lot of the copper ingots into copper powder, which uh, copper powder obviously goes into nuclear pasta, an end game item. Um, but for now, that's going over to the truck stations. And a little bit of this copper ingot is going into copper sheets or AI limiters. All right, this factory here next to the steel is taking a lot of pipes and it is making a lot of stators. Um, it's using iron wire and um, obviously pipes and making stators and they go all the way over there to the train station. Here we have our heavy modular frames. So that's this, this factory here, heavy modular frames. I'm using two different recipes just because of the amount of rubber I was, uh, I was able to get. So we end up with 50 per minute of those. This factory here is making 525 versatile frameworks per minute. Um, pretty standard factory there, and that's doing that. All right, let's move on over here. Now, actually, we'll go to the uh, rubber factory. So over, excuse the FPS drop over there. Can't ping it for some reason. Too far away. There. Uh, is the oil and it comes all the way down here along with a couple of nodes. I had to decide whether they counted as the desert or not, but you know, I'm going to grab them eventually anyway. Uh, all the way down here into the rubber factory, we do the rubber tripling technique where we turn rubber to plastic and back and forth with fuel. And uh, we get heaps of rubber. I forgot the amount, but a lot. Alrighty, the concrete. Oh my goodness, the concrete. Um, after I did all the factories um, and all the steel and uh, iron and copper and everything, I was left with a hell of a lot of just limestone nodes. Um, so, you know, I've got to use all the nodes. Um, I'm going to make the most complex stuff I can. But for now, um, I had to make concrete. And the most efficient way to make concrete is with the pure concrete recipe. Um, so you need to mix it with water. And yeah. And because pipes are a bit dicky in the game, especially uh, Mark II pipes, 
Um, I made sure I overfed my machines. Um, so all of these pipes are giving slightly more than they need. Um, but it made for a pretty cool flyover. And it looks pretty cool. Right, so if you see these a little bit yellow sometimes, it's because they're set up to uh, pump the factory with more water than it needs. All right, this was a hell of a, a beast just for limestone. So getting the uh, the belts in from all over the um, the biome. Oh man, that was hectic. All right, so all of these all of these are 600 lines, and these are 780 lines, and that's how I set the factory up. Um, by the way, I will share the save file, um, so you can go explore it for yourself. All right, so we ended up making a metric shit ton of co concrete. All right, excuse my voice, my throat's a bit croaky, um, but it is what it is. Okay, uh, this factory here, um, I made a few videos on this before as I was building it. Some... <laughs> the last video I made was horrible quality. I'm real sorry about that. I'm probably going to just take that video down. But anyway, um, this makes 1,300 modular frames per minute, um, which is a lot. Right? A lot of them go into here and here, but the rest of them are just going to the train station. That's this whole entire massive factory right here. All right, so that covers all the factories, um, unless I missed something. <laughs> But uh, that covers all the factories in the desert biome. The final thing I was left to do after the monstrous um, limestone thingy, uh, concrete thingy, the final thing I was left to do was the trucks. And I was like, yeah, sweet. I'll just throw some trucks down um, and that'll be cool. So I would pick up the, the things that were too intensive to put on trains, um, as in the item numbers. So quick wire, copper powder, Sorry about the slideshow. Um, copper powder and our concrete. Now, let's talk about trucks. First of all, I love trucks. They're bloody awesome. Not only do they look cool, but they're actually quite good. They're quite functional. Um, let's find a truck. This one's on the move. We'll just find it. Uh, obviously, plutonium powered. Let's see if we can go in and have a look at how much concrete it's carrying. It's a whole lot of concrete that it's carrying. Now, they are actually quite good at transporting large amounts of numbers, um, but I would advise and obviously do whatever you want and it's my own personal opinion, but the things that go best in trucks are the things that stack to 500. Things like this, um, reinforced iron plates and whatever else that only stack to one and two hundreds, they're not going to get a really efficient um, throughput on trucks. So for my trucks, um, they're all using things that stack to 500, like limestone, quick wire, and copper powder. So with the, the truck path, this took me a long time. I was like, all right, so what I'm going to do is because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with, uh, or what I, what I'm going to, where I'm going to do this stuff. I'm going to transport them across to pretty much the other side of the world. Um, all the way over to down there, which I can't ping, but down there. So it's a big old trek. Um, and I was like, I'll just put a temporary sinking hub just to test throughput. So I've got nine trucks and um, I had to drive every single route so i had to drive the route nine times which doesn't seem that bad but you've got to drive the entire route making sure you stay in the, the right lane and all that left side of the road obviously for australia um all the way through here it's a pretty cool drive all the way up here and this is the quote unquote temporary sinking area that i made um, and it's sinking all of that quick wire and all of the copper powder and all of the limestone all into here. Now, massive frame drop right now. <laughs> now, this ended up, I got carried away like I usually do, made it a bit neat, made it a bit fancy. Not that fancy, but you know, whatever. It's not too bad. And I have the plutonium uh, 
power coming in from an explorer. Where is the explorer? He is... There he is. He's actually coming in right now. Let's see if we can have a look at him. Here he comes. So he's um, bringing the plutonium rods. Now, the plutonium rods, for those that don't already know, are absolutely brilliant for trucks. So if we just go um, have a look, quick look at the um, wiki, I've got the plutonium fuel rod here. And for those that don't know, you scroll down here. It actually, we've got, got some stats here. One plutonium fuel rod will run a truck for five and a half hours. Absolutely incredible. Um, I have my plutonium, I have my normal nuclear waste from this side of the map getting picked up in four trucks. Actually, I think there's eight trucks and I, I could probably get away with four. Are going all the way, literally all the way to the other side of the world over there to get processed. Anyway. The end of the day, trucks are bloody awesome. Alrighty, so now just to finish up the video, um, I'll talk a little bit about Fixit Cam. So first of all, um, Fixit Cam is bloody awesome. Uh, I am an absolute noob amateur when it comes to Fixit Cam. I was trying to use it. Um, I couldn't even get the camera to move, but I'm not that great at that sort of stuff. I found the UI for it quite unintuitive, and I couldn't really find many tutorials that are for dummies like me just a very simple tutorial um, but i ended up managing to get it work to work so um panacotta who's the maker bloody hell man it's such a great mod um, and one of the best things about it is talking about frame drops there's a mode in fix it cam where it renders it without any fps loss so as it's rendering it'll look like it's chunking slowly but it's actually, um, that's what I used for my initial video. And you'll notice they're actually quite smooth. Even though, if I'm to fly around like this, I'm going to get massive frame drops like this one right now. I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, but with the Fix-It Cam, if anyone wants me, or actually, first of all, if anyone knows where there's a good, easy tutorial for it, can you point me in that direction? Um, otherwise... If you want a very dumbed down version of how to use fix it cam, the very, very basics, because that's all I know, um, I'm actually happy to make one because I was tearing out my hair or what's left of it, uh, just trying to get it to work. Um, but yeah, uh, that's going to be it, guys. Catch you later.